And this is what the guys mean when they say there is no good girls in our community. There are plenty of good young women in our community. And this is what the sisters mean, the ladies mean when they say there are no good men in our community. There are many good individuals, noble individuals, honorable young men in our community. So what's happening here? I'll tell you what's happening. Number one, for the men, you ain't no Drake. Please, understand this. What do I mean? Some guys, the way they reflect themselves, they portray themselves, is that he is, number one, on a permanent vacation. He's on a permanent vacation. Always going around, smoking argila, 4 a.m., posting 4 a.m., he's smoking argila, shisha, at the shisha joint. He's irresponsible. Seems like he's the most careless dude ever. Obviously, nobody wants to start a family with you, my brother. Before you think of marriage, and before you complain about there are no good girls in our community, you have to start with your own self. Stop thinking about marriage for a moment. Stop thinking about wanting to find someone. You have to settle down yourself. You have to start acting with responsibility as an adult. Ask yourself, you know, if I was a woman, would I want to marry myself? Would I want to marry, you know, you? And answer yourself. That is, that is something very serious to think about. So what, do you, what should I start with? Start with fixing your bed when you wake up in the morning. Make your bed. You think this is funny? I swear to you, Wallahi, many of the men in our community. It takes 30 seconds. Make your bed. Learn how to use a vacuum cleaner. You know, watch a YouTube video. How do you turn it on? How do you vacuum? Start acting more responsibly. Make better decisions. Don't stay in this teenage phase. You're no longer a teenager. Now you're an adult. You want to become a father. You want to start a family. You're going to be responsible for other individuals. If you're out there every day smoking shisha until 4 in the morning, when are you going to wake up and go to work? Work hard. I say, no, inshallah, when I get married, now I have my freedom. When I get married, I have to work hard. No, start working hard today. Take life seriously. Most importantly, cut some of your friends. Look, you were a friend with this guy in high school. Maybe college. Do you still need him? Is he, is he really a friend? Is he somebody positive in your life? Yes, you may love this person. You truly love this person, but sometimes you need to cut that relationship. If this person is calling you every night, yalla, shisha is ready. The faham is on the fire. Cut this guy out of your life. I'm not saying don't ever smoke shisha, don't ever have fun, don't ever hang out with you, but don't get addicted. And look, some people, let, let me be honest with you. Some people, they come from money. MashaAllah, his dad, he's very wealthy. And he's giving this guy $10,000 at the beginning of each month, let him go and do whatever he wants with it. Is that the case for you? You gotta hustle. You gotta work hard. Today you are young. Get yourself in the habit of waking up early. Sleep early. Exercise. Think of yourself. Think of your health. Get a haircut. I see some people, Allah, some of the youth today. I'm thinking, why? Is there no barber in your city? What's happening? Get a haircut. Fix your beard. Some of them, his beard starts by his eyes and it ends, you know, it, it gets connected to his chest hair. Groom yourself. Take care of yourself. Iron your clothes. Dress properly. Don't dress like you're in the ninth grade. Well, I've seen some 30-year-olds, they dress like they're, you know, in the ninth grade. This is inappropriate. This is not manly. Ask the side, the side of the hall. Does anybody want to get married to a 30-year-old man who dresses like a ninth grader? Raise your hands. It's common sense. Because I see people now in their 30s and they're still single. And, and look, things have changed. Look at, go read Pew. You know, in, in the 90s, in the 80s, people were getting married in their 20s. Then it shifted in the 90s to 25s. Now it's shifted to 30s. 
People like this comfort. You know, I'm going to just be lazy. I don't want to be responsible for anybody or anything. I'm just going to live single for the rest of my life. Yeah, whenever, you know, maybe I'll get married. This maybe I'll get married doesn't work in Islam. In Islam, the reality of the issue is if you stay single until you're 30, you've piled a lot of sins. Do not fool yourself. So the first thing, brothers, before you think of marriage, because I know people who do get married before they change those habits, and he's still sleeping until noontime, and his wife is working. He's still going out until 4 a.m., smoking shisha with his friends. He's still on constant vacation. He still doesn't make his bed. He doesn't, he doesn't feel respond. That marriage is bound to break. That's why we have skyrocketing divorce race, rates in our community now. Once you change your habits, you feel good about yourself, then you will attract the right individual, I guarantee you. You don't have to look for them in the wrong places. They will come to you. Allah will send them in your way. Now sisters, please remain seated during this portion. Keep calm. Can we have some security? <laughs> Look, for the sisters, I'll say this. I'll say, unfortunately, we, the sisters, also portray on social media what they really aren't. And that is the truth. And I don't want to generalize. I don't want to say every single one. Some of you also say, I don't even have social media. I'm not talking about you. Okay? I'm referring to what's causing this problem. So now we know, when the sisters say there are no good guys in the community, we know what the problem is. They want somebody responsible. They want somebody who's ready to start a family. Now what do the guys mean when they say there's no good girls in our community? Look, I know a lot of the sisters, they help their mothers in the kitchen, for example. They cook, they clean. But they never post that on social media. That she's helping her mom in the kitchen, or, she's, or she attends a majalis. In full hijab, she's part of the community, she's volunteering. That never shows up on your feed. But what shows up on their feed? Oh, I'm struggling to get into Louis Vuitton. It's been like two hours already. And I'm trying to buy my Louis Vuitton bag. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's been a hard, terrible day. And uh, yes. Nobody wants to see your nails on social media either. I just got out of the salon and, you know, we all know you have nails, it's normal, every human being has nails. Men don't want to marry your Louis Vuitton purse nor your nails, believe me. A man who's ready to get married wants to marry you for your akhlaq, for your morality, for your ethics, for your patience, for your community service, for your haya. This is the person you should attract, at least. This is the person that is ready to settle down. And that comes off as superficial. You may not be a superficial person, a materialistic person. But that is intimidating. It's intimidating. This guy is thinking if she's buying herself a Louis Vuitton purse right now, I'd have to buy one every single year. And that's only for her birthday, and then comes the anniversary, and then comes this, and then comes that. I'm not ready for that. Believe me, it plays a huge role. At this moment, this is indeed not a joke. I guarantee you. Now let's ask this side. Do we even need to ask? There you go. Take this from me. I know many of you will be upset. Some of you will not like what I'm about to say. If you're a single woman, prior to getting married, give up the Louis Vuitton bag. Give it up. Donate it to me. I'll know what to do with it. Do not, I know many of the sisters in our community, they have a passion for faith and motherhood and taking care of their families and, and iman and faith and akhlaq. But that's not what's appearing on your feed. That's not what you're showing others. And that's what guys mean by there are no good girls in our community. Because he's not ready to settle down for somebody who he thinks he can't keep up with. The only way for me to get into her heart is through the Louis Vuitton bag. If I can't afford getting her one, you know, she won't like me, she won't love me. Those are common mistakes that I believe have created a huge 
roadblock for people in our community to get to know one another. Another issue is, brothers and sisters, it is the community centers themselves, the leadership in our communities. We have many sort of programs now. Ashura, Fatimiya, Arba'een, Hawza, uh, Feeding the Homeless, there are many, many. But we do not have a proper method for people to get to know one another. Now there are some attempts, but I don't like them. Why? Because the first time this young woman sits across from a young man, they have to talk about marriage. She doesn't even know him. It's very weird for you to sit across from somebody for the very first time. Salaamu Alaikum, what's your name? My name is Ali. What's your name? My name is Fatima. How many kids do you want to have? It's just, it's weird. Let them be in a structure where they're attracted to each other's minds, intellect, spirituality. Let them get to know each other first without having to talk about marriage. Without having to talk about things that make things awkward. Because, you know, maybe she'll talk to him, he'll talk to her, maybe they see each other in such and such. And they, won't, they don't want to get to know each other for marriage. 